Today, we have one of my favorite aftermarket parts companies, HKS. This is a company based out of Japan with a rich history in making cars fast and setting records. I love this company and have quite a few HKS parts on my cars, but is it all good? Let's take a look today at HKS in this episode of The Good, Bad, and Ugly. Starting with the good, we gotta talk about the very good reputation that HKS has. These three letters are synonymous with high quality aftermarket parts when it comes to the tuning world. They ain't cheap, but they aren't trying to be cheap. This company started way back in 1973 and started by making a turbocharger kit with the Ken Mary Skyline back in that day. HKS managed to boost the power output from that car by 40% according to HKS's website. And that's a big deal. And honestly, it was a big hit that they needed out of the gate to become a really successful tuning company. Today, HKS is known for making very good quality parts for a huge variety of applications. What's crazy is that across all the different product categories that they are all excellent products. It's not like they have a lazy attempt whatsoever. Let's list some categories. HKS has exhaust, coilovers, intakes, filters, blow-off valves, turbo setups, superchargers, cooling products, standalone ECUs, turbo timers, boost controllers, fuel injectors, rods, pistons, camshafts, entire frickin' complete motors, clutches, brakes, their own oil, spark plugs, silicone couplers, and even aero kits. That's just some of the categories. There's still more than that if you can believe it. Their catalog is absolutely insane, and like I said before, none of it is lazy and all of it is well done. I have quite a few different components on my cars, from turbos to intercoolers and coilovers, and have nothing but amazing things to say about them. One thing you guys might not know about is that HKS was actually developing an engine for Formula One. It didn't make it out of the testing phase, but not many companies have the know-how to do something like that, like even approach making a Formula One motor. That's one more example of HKS's expertise. Back to the parts, let's talk about some of the most iconic parts you guys might be familiar with. Really starting off that list is the super sequential blow-off valve, the super flow intake filter, that's a like mushroom looking filter, it's usually green, red, or like yellow, <clears throat> uh, high flow power exhaust, Hypermax coilovers, FCON ECUs, and the ultra baller status RB26 VCAM system. Combining all these parts can make for some amazing builds, and the sum of these legendary parts has created some legendary cars for HKS. This is a company that truly puts its money where its mouth is and invests in making some serious race cars to prove how knowledgeable they are in their craft. Let's go through some of the legendary cars done by HKS in the good section here. First, near and dear to my heart as an IS300 owner is the HKS Alteza TRB01. This was a full carbon fiber time attack weapon and really set the stage for HKS to start chasing and breaking time attack records. This Alteza was built for one purpose and that was to set the record at Tsukuba Circuit, which it did in 2001 with a 55.8 second lap time. There really isn't much Alteza left of this car with a full tube chassis and really only the Alteza headlights and taillights basically remaining. Either way, it's a really cool car and it's absolutely iconic when it comes to HKS. Up next, we have a very special R33 GTR. This particular GTR is a drag racing legend with the famed 7.671 second pass on the quarter mile, which was a record that this car held for quite some time in the all wheel drive category. This GTR has an RB26 with 1,300 horsepower under the hood. It might be an RB26, but instead of 2.6 liters of displacement, this one has 2.8 liters thanks to a stroker kit HKS developed for this car and then used that technology to bring to the public itself. There's also a lot of boost on the setup with a pair of HKS turbos making 35 PSI to be exact. This machine is crazy, but also a testament of the products being developed for racing and then made for consumers. This next car might be one that you guys have actually driven, well, virtually at least, in Gran Turismo 4, 5, or 6. That car would be the HKS Genki Hyper Silvia. This Silvia made its debut in 2003 to the world by competing in the D1 Grand Prix, which is the top level drifting competition in Japan at the time. This car had a spot weld the chassis, giant tubs in the front for the wheels, and most of the weight was actually moved towards the center of the car wherever possible. Oh yeah, and this thing had a 2.2 liter SR, which is 0.2 liters more than a stock one, thanks to a little HKS magic. And that SR produced 480 horsepower and was made into an HKS sequential gearbox. This was bonkers back in 2003, guys. Also, there was no hydro here. It kept the factory handbrake that like drift cars should have. This is honestly one of the most iconic S chassis, and it was an era where professional drift cars still looked extremely cool. Not just like dedicated race cars, kind of how they do today. 
The fourth and final car I want to go into detail about is my all-time favorite car ever. I was lucky enough to see it at SEMA last year and I totally fangirled out. This car is none other than the HKS Group A R32 Skyline GTR. Nissan's GTR dominated Group A racing back in the day. HKS gave the Skyline its own treatment here where they could. That's because this racing series had some strict rules that disallowed certain modifications. HKS entered the racing series as a privateer team, which meant there wasn't huge factory backing by Nissan. HKS used their cooling components along with their intercooler on the car. HKS also used their intake and filter on the car with an HKS VPC instead of the mass airflow meter that you'd usually find in an RB26 DETT. The power is put down on the track with HKS's own hyper dampers. This is a very cool car and is extremely iconic when it comes to HKS. HKS has crafted a lot of other cars as well, but this would be a two hour video if we gave them all the same treatment. Just to name a few of the other iconic cars from this tuning company would be the current GR86 that you've built with the off the shelf components, the HKS Drag 180SX, A70 Supra Drag Car, R32 Drag Car, the Altezza Drift Car, and the GT1000 Plus. All these cars are very cool and were built to show the world who HKS was and what they stood for. Now, if you don't know the performance nature of these cars, you still might think they are iconic because of another good part of HKS. That would be their liveries and brand style. HKS has maintained a very simple aesthetic with their block letters and simple coloring, letting the parts and performance speak for themselves. What is a little crazy and probably the most iconic part of HKS visually would be their oil splash liveries, which have been featured in some of the most iconic cars, such as the R32 GTR that I just really went in depth about. You can see this pattern on many other items now due to its popularity, and people have even done full interiors featuring this color like pattern on fabric and stuff, because it's that iconic and nostalgic. HKS isn't just stuck in the past though, and focusing on heritage just to move units. I love HKS because they are pretty darn fast to jump onto new platforms. The most recent example would be their support for the current generation of Supra and the brand new GR86. This is a company that is truly pushing the envelope and using their past proven knowledge to make parts for new cars and apply that knowledge to those cars and it works. There is a ton of good things with HKS, but let's go into the bad section next, which honestly isn't super long. I really only have two items here in the bad section. The first thing I wanna talk about is their parts availability and lead times. I know in Japan, this is significantly better, but in the USA, when things go out of stock, they can be very difficult, if not impossible, to get back in stock again. There are even some parts that I had watched go from back order for three to six months and then just get discontinued. I know this isn't unique to HKS, but their huge parts catalog can be a downside when it comes to inventory and production. I'm glad they don't just rush stuff out the door or sacrifice quality, but getting their parts can be very difficult and that is frustrating. The second item here is definitely more opinionated but some of the hype drops with limited edition tool sets or merch that is a super inflated price look just kind of silly. The reason I say that is, and trust me, I love HKS, so I would absolutely buy this stuff if I could afford it, is that this is usually a pretty serious brand and focuses on the parts and performance that the parts give. These drops seem a little bit more like a distraction or a cash grab than anything else. But if any of you snag that HKS tool set that was like $700, I do think that would be a pretty funny flex. Okay, now for the ugly section. And I only have one thing to say here, and my friend Dakota is the one who brought it up since he has some personal experience with this, but I also verified this with some other folks as well. HKS will sometimes announce a product or say they're making something, but it either completely misses its release date or just doesn't come out. Dakota has some super cool HKS parts on his Supra, and he wanted the announced HKS strut tower bar and rear harness bar slash brace. Well, they still haven't come out and he reached out to an HKS dealer. This dealer confirmed that HKS tends to do this and is a bit frustrating since they as the dealer have to field a bunch of the questions. That's all I got for the ugly section, like literally it. If you guys didn't notice, there really isn't a major issue with HKS in the bad or ugly sections because there isn't much out there and that's awesome. Like that's okay not to have horrible things going on. They are a great company and I love seeing what they come out with. You might have wanted me to put the price of their parts in the bad or ugly section, but I'm not willing to do that. HKS makes quality products and you truly get what you pay for. I do not want to penalize a company for charging what they should for parts they invest a lot of time and money to develop. If you guys think we missed something in either the good, the bad, or the ugly section, 
Drop a comment down below and say what it is and what section that it should go in. I personally read and respond to those comments. Also, if you're not following us on TikTok as well, be sure to go follow us there because we got content that's, well, it, it's a little different. It's kind of exciting, kind of funny. I think you guys would love it. But I appreciate you guys watching. I'm Sam. Peace.